hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel basic to glam chic for yet another travel vlog around italy if you're new here welcome in this channel i merge both fashion and traveling please subscribe to my channel as i shall be showing you all the amazing places in italy to visit and also travel fashionably Today's video is at Fontana di Trevi or Trevi Fountain, the most famous fountain in the world and has appeared in several notable films like La Dolce Vita, which is a common Italian phrase known to literally mean the sweet life or the good life. But the real origin of La Dolce Vita is a story of another day. So I'll talk to you about Trevi Fountain, who built it and when, what do all the statues symbolize, what do they do with all the money that the people throw in there every day and where does the water come from. For that we have to go back more than 2000 years. So without further ado, let's get started. Ready? Let's go. Where did the name Trevi come from? The name Trevi probably comes from the Tre Vie in Italian, which means three ways. The fountain stands at the crossroads of three streets, hence Fontana di Trevi, literally means three street fountain. So where does this water come from? So the water here comes from an aqueduct that was made in 19 BC by Agrippa. So Marcus Agrippa, was the right hand man and son-in-law of Emperor Augustus who was the first emperor of ancient Rome. If you go to the Pantheon, I will soon do a video on this so stay tuned guys, you are going to see at the top written Agrippa and he's the one that brought in this water into Rome via an aqueduct called Aqua Virgo now known Aqua, Aqua Virgine. This aqueduct is the only aqueduct from ancient Rome still functioning today. The aqueduct was built mainly to supply water into the baths of Agrippa. Who and when was the fountain built? The fountain you see today was completed in the 18th century, though its history goes back more than 2000 years. The Trevi Fountain took over 100 years to build and this is because it had stops and starts due to the budget constraints and the changes in pops and architects over the years. The first fountain on the site of the current Trevi Fountain was designed by Leon Battista Alberti in 1453 under Pope Nicholas V. Then, in 1629, Pope Urban VIII saw that the earlier foundation was kind of basic and also because he lived just at the intersection where the fountain was so he did not think his view was interesting enough it needed some spice so because a fan of Gian Lorenzo Bernini who was an Italian sculptor and architect and is credited with creating the baroque style of sculpture which you'll see a lot in Rome such as Fontana dei Quattro Fiumi or the Fountain of Four Rivers, the Fontana del Tritone, Fontana del Barcaccia, amongst others. All these mentioned, I'll soon do a video on. Just give me the time to do the editing. Yeah, guys, it's a lot. <laughs> okay, 
So, back to our story. So, Bernini drew some sketches of a new fountain so the Pope Urban VIII could have something nicer to to see outside of his window. But at the time, the Pope had waging war to deal with, so the fountain project was put on the side, even though Bernini did do a little bit of work on this project. So, fast forward to 100 years or so later. In 1730, Pope Clement XII organized a contest in which Nicola Salvi, who initially lost to Alessandro Galilei from Florence, yes, related to the one and only famous Galileo Galilei, but due to the outcry in Rome over Florentine having won, hence Salvi was awarded the commission and work began in 1732. Therefore, Nicola Salvi is the architect most credited with the current design of the Trevi Fountain. Unfortunately, Salvi died when it was only halfway finished, so he did not see its completion. Hey, this is more like the Trevi drama, hey? Anywho, Trevi Fountain was finally finished in 1762 by Giuseppe Panini. So there you have it, the long, 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 long history of the fountain. Now let's get on the fun part, the myth of the coin throwing into the fountain. So if you throw one coin using the right hand over the left shoulder, you'll return to Rome. It's a guarantee. If you throw two coins, always with your right hand over your left shoulder, then you will fall in love. If you throw three coins, then you'll get married to that person. Wondering what they do with these coins that people throw in every day? So, they, there are about 3,000 euro worth of coins thrown into the Trevi Fountain every single day. And this money goes to Caritas, which is an Italian pastoral organization that helps the needy families. What do the statues at the Trevi Fountain symbolize? So, we have three main statues, Oceanus, Abadans, and Health. The guy in the middle is Oceanus, who represents all the Earth's waters in the form of a river that goes around the globe. Oceanus and his chariot in the shape of a shell are drawn by two seahorses. One is docile and the other wild, which represents the moods of the sea. To the left is Abadans, and you can see she's holding a basket full of fruits to represent Abadans. To the right represents health. You can see the snake wrapped around drinking water from a cup and a spear, which is a symbol of medicine. On top of Abadans is a bar relief that shows the story of Agrippa instructing his men to construct the aqueduct, the Aqua Virgo, that will bring the water into ancient Rome for the Roman baths, the baths of Agrippa. Above health is another bas-relief that tells the story of the young virgin that showed the Roman soldiers where the spring was. That's the name of this aqueduct basically, the Aqua Virgo, Aqua Vergine, which is for virgin water supposedly because of the story. On the top of the fountain are four smaller statues. They represent all the evidence that water can bring. The first represents abundance of fruit. As you can see, she's carrying a cornucopia full of fruits. The second represents fertility of fruits. She's holding some strand of wheat. The third represents abundance of fall harvest, grapes, wine. The statue holds a cup with grapes. The fourth represents abundance of flowers. So basically, this fountain celebrates what plenty of water can bring to earth. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next content. If there's anything I missed or should have added, let me know in the comments below. After all, we are all here to educate and be educated. Also, if you're planning to visit Rome or Italy in general, just know that your vacation will be more of education than holiday. <laughs> Enjoy your vacation all the same, Italy is beautiful. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please watch my other travel videos and hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Class dismissed! <laughs>